Hi, yes, all right. Okay, so seeing as we finished our last um, group novel, okay, we're going to start a new one still with Michael Morpurgo as our author because he's our year five author. Okay, this one is called The Last Wolf, as you can see. Okay, so have a little think, maybe make some predictions about what you might think it'd be about. Okay, so I'm going to read you the blurb. I shall call you Charlie, for you are Bonnie and the Prince Among Wolves. When Robbie the Cloud finds an orphan wolf cub and vows to take care of him, it is the beginning of an adventure that sweeps boy and beast from the highlands to the high seas and beyond. Award-winning author Michael Morpurgo creates a spell-binding story of bravery and loyalty brought vividly to life by Michael Foreman's slim black and white illustrations. Okay, so I for one, I'm looking forward to getting started with this. Okay. Chapter 1 Maya's New Fangled Machine. You're an ostrich, Grandpa, Maya told me, sitting herself down on my bed and feeling an orange for me. And why is that then? I asked her. Because whenever you see something you don't like, you just bury your head in the sand and pretend it's not there. It was an old argument between us, not that you'd call it an argument as such, or a tease. But whatever it was, I knew that sooner rather than later she was going to wear me down. Maya was determined to drag me into the 21st century whether I liked it or not, and now she'd find the perfect opportunity. You've got nothing else to do, Grandpa, she went on. You're bored out of your mind. Why not try it, at, at least? I'll come in and teach you, if you like, every evening. Won't take long. It's easy peasy. Nothing to be frightened of. I'm not frightened, I replied. I just don't see the point of all these newfangled machines, that's all. Like I said, you're an ostrich. Here. She gave me my orange. Eat, it's good for you, she said. Listen, Grandpa, it's brilliant, honest. There's millions of different things you can do on it. Email, word processing, games, shopping. I hate shopping, I told her. You're a grumpy old ostrich too, she said, bending over to kiss me on the cheek. We'll get started tomorrow. I'll bring off my laptop. All right, bye. And she was out the door and gone, ignoring all of my protests. She had won. All this came out because I'd been ill. Just flew at first, but then it became pneumonia. The doctor, who's a good friend of mine, as well as my doctor, wagged his finger at me and said, Now you listen to me, Michael Cloud. This is serious. You're no spring chicken anymore. You've got to stay in bed and in the warm. No more gardening, no more golfing, no more fishing. You've got to look after yourself. So cooped up in my flat for weeks on end, I had become, as Maya had so rightly diagnosed, bored out of my mind. Maya was 14, my eldest granddaughter and the apple of my eye. She was always popping in to cheer me up, bless her. She lived just around the corner, and she did cheer me up too, even if she did go on and on about the joys of her wretched computer. The truth was that so long as she came to see me, I didn't mind what we did and what we talked about. It would pass the time, and talking about computers made a welcome change from ch losing to her at chess again. The computer lesson did not start well. I just could not get my head around it at all. Then bit by bit, day by day, with Maya's help, I began to make some sense of it. And once I made sense of it, I began to enjoy it, much to my surprise. A couple of weeks later, Maya went off on her summer holidays, leaving me strict instructions as to how to plug in and keep in touch with her by email. She told me I must promise to practice every day on my computer. I promise, and I like to keep my promises. So except for occasional check-up visits from my doctor friend and from my neighbour who very kindly did all my shopping for me, I was left alone in the house with my computer. One morning as I sat there in front of it about to switch it on, I began asking myself why I was doing this. I mean, what was this machine really for? What could it do for me? How, now I've begun to master it, could I use it to help me through the long days? That still lay ahead of me. I needed a project, I thought, something to occupy my mind. Something I could really get my teeth into, and something this computer could help me to achieve. I had a sudden idea. It was an old idea. One I'd had in the back of my mind for many years, but I'd never bothered to do anything much about. This was my opportunity. I had the time, and now I had the means. Literally at my fingertips. I would set out on a quest, a quest I could achieve throughout ever leaving my flat. I could do it all, the whole thing, on the internet, by email. I would search out my roots, piece together my family tree, discover where I came from, who I came from. I would trace my family line back as far as I could go. On my mother's side, the Meredith side, this proved simple enough because they had lived in this country, in Suffolk mostly, for many generations. And I could track them down through parish records, through registers of births and marriages and deaths. 
and I should trace that side of the family all the way back to Hannah Meredith, who I discovered had been baptised in the South Wall on the 2nd of May, 1730. It was like detective work, genealogical detective work, and I was soon completely engrossed in it. I was emailing dozens of times a day. I had all the information I had gathered on, on a database. Maya and I exchanged emails often, particularly when I got stuck and need, needed her help. As Maya had said, her computer was brilliant, utterly brilliant. But my father's family, the McLeod side, the Scottish side, proved much more difficult to trace, even with the help of a computer, because they had moved around the world, one of the family to Argentina, one to Australia, and another to the United States of America. Only a few generations back, the trails kept going cold, and I was beginning to feel frustrated. I simply had no more clues to follow up, not a single one. And then, thank goodness, Maya came back home from her holidays and to my rescue. She told me I should upload my whole family tree onto a genealogical website and appeal for help that way. So that's what I did. For several days, I had no response at all. Then one evening, Maya logged on for me and found an email from Marianne McLeod of Boston, Massachusetts in the United States. She had, she wrote, studied my father's side of, my, of the family tree with great interest and felt sure we must be distant cousins. She, like me, had been researching her family background. She called it her lifelong obsession and had traced her family to Scotland as far back as the 1700s. To her ancestor and mine, she hoped, one Robin McLeod of Invernessia. Quite by chance, she had recently discovered, hidden away amongst her family papers, Robin McLeod, last will and testament. It's the most wonderful story I've ever read. I've scanned it into my computer. Would you like to see it? Would I? I emailed back to her at once. Greetings, distant cousin. I can't wait. Maya was, it, was as excited as I was now. There was no reply until nearly 24 hours later. Maya was there beside me when I first read it. One glance told me that it had been worth waiting for. As I read, my heart in my mouth with excitement, I knew that my quest had been achieved. That with the help of Maya's new final machine, Maya and I discovered something quite wonderful, as wonderful as any holy grail. I was reading the last words in his own handwriting of my great, 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 great grandfather. He was speaking to us from across the nature. Oh, I have a feeling it's going to get good. <laughs>